morning, Lakeway. Oh, come on, y'all can do better than that. Good morning, Lakeway. Well, good morning. How are y'all doing? I'm Mo Kinsley. It's no, most people know me. I've been called other things, but that's my name. Uh, I want to welcome you here to Lakeway. Y'all could have went anywhere in the Metroplex, and y'all decided to come here. Same as the people in the Internet. Y'all could have tuned into any other church, but you chose to come here. We're glad you're here. It's a blessing to us. We want to thank you for that. And today we want to invite you, as well as the Holy Spirit, to come into our service, to lead us through everything. And most of all, I want to see that smile on y'all's face. All right? So why don't y'all stand up? I'm going to open us with prayer, and then y'all can talk amongst yourselves, as we, so to say. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you today just thanking you for this morning. What a beautiful day that you made this so that we could enjoy it. We thank you for that. As we go throughout the service and throughout our, our day, we just pray that you be with us. We invite you into our service. Lead us in this service. Lord, anything we learn, we just thank you for that and pray that we can retain it and share it with someone who doesn't know about you. Help us to be that light in the land of darkness that we live in. We thank you and we give you all the praise. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Talk amongst yourselves. Good morning, Lakeway. Good morning. How are we doing this morning? Wonderful. I ask that every week. Some weeks I get a good response and some weeks not so much. Well, you know, sometimes when we come to worship the Lord where we have praises to bring to him, um, and sometimes we have burdens to bring to him, and sometimes we have both, right? And so I just pray for you that whatever camp you're in this morning, that you would be able to just set those aside um, just for the moment and, and inter interact with your good God um, who loves you this morning and who will be your strength if it's burdened and who will be joyful with you if you're praising. So let's all worship the Lord this morning. Remember that fear 
that took our breath away. Faith so weak that we could barely pray. But he heard every word, every whisper. And now those altars in the wilderness tell the story of his faithfulness. Never once did he fail. that one over this morning. <laughs> Your worship leader is not perfect, let me tell you. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. Let's sing this out. You wrestle with the sin. to mercy and nothing can keep us apart Amen So remember your people Remember your children Remember your promise of oh God Your grace is enough Your grace is enough Your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your children sing along. So remember your people.
what you're bringing to the table this morning, whether you fell short this week, didn't live up to your own standards even, God is good and he covers it all and he loves us so much that he called us his children. Think about how much you love your children or if you don't have children, how much your parents loved you. This is an unending, unconditional kind of love that he has for you. a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves 
us, how he loves us, oh. And he is jealous for me loves like a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful and how great your affections are for me. And know oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. And know oh, how he loves us so. In his eyes, if his grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. So heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss, and my heart turns violently inside of my chest. And I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way yeah, he loves. Amen. Oh God, thank you for who you are, Lord, and thank you that this morning, no matter what we bring to you, God, you love us still, that we are still your children, that we get another day to try again, God. And really, the whole point is just to grow closer to you, God, and as we put off the things of the flesh, God, we get to grow closer to you, and in that we find joy, in that we find benefit, God. And so we're just so thankful 
to you for giving us that opportunity that we get to draw closer to you to find truth and meaning in this life and to know who we are why we're here god it's just it's a huge weight off we know what we're called to do we're called to love you we're called to love each other we're called to serve you and in that we get to have peace unexplainable peace we get to have joy unexplainable joy we get to have all of those wonderful fruits that you promise us and so we're just so thankful for that we pray for pastor mike as he brings the sermon god that our ears would be open and willing to listen to what you have to say to us this morning god and we pray all of these things in your beautiful son's name jesus amen start to speak, Mo forgot something this morning, like I, you know, I'm 65, okay, you got these cards in front of you, would you please look at those, and I know, I got it right here, hurry on. sorry, I meant to tell y'all, please fill these out, because we just love that you're here, and we want to have a record that you're here, and we promise not to you know, sell you something. We just want to thank you for coming. And as you leave, see Bob. Everybody knows who Bob is. No. He'll give you a cup, and it's got all the things in it you need to know. But thank you, and I'll bring that up at the offering. Sorry about forgetting that. Thank you, Mo. Take it away, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Now this, what you see here, is what happens when you combine spring break and spring forward. <laughs> it's the perfect storm. Last week, um, last week we had the largest attendance we've had since 2020. So yeah, which was, which was pretty good. And apparently I said something. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank those who are online for being here. You know, there is a lot of stuff going on right now. Some of these empty seats have got nothing to do with spring break or, or spring forward. We have a lot of families that are dealing with difficult situations. Um, anytime the kingdom of light moves forward, the kingdom of darkness seeks to push back. And we have a number of families this week that are dealing with serious issues, um, Loved ones who are sick, very, very sick. Some who are close to passing on. Some have got loved ones who are hurting. And, and there, there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on. And it, it, it's always going on and we're in a war. So I just want to take a minute just to, to lift all of that in prayer. Father, we just give you thanks. Uh, I just love that last song that we've just sang. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and you love us. And you have promised us that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. But Father, I also know that we live in this material world. We live in this physical fallen world, and we don't, we're not immune to the consequences of the fall. So, Father, I want to lift up those families that are not here this morning because they're dealing with difficult situations, with loved ones who are hurt and sick. And Father, let your Holy Spirit just be with them right now, I pray. Let your peace be with them right now. Bring that peace that surpasses all understanding into their situation. And, Father, as I come now to bring this message, there's a lot of scripture this morning. Father, wake us up. Keep our minds focused so that we don't wander. Let us hear from you today, Father, and empty me of me so that my words are not my words. They are your words, empowered by your Spirit, to bring about transformation in our lives. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Now, the other thing that happens when you combine spring break and spring forward is you don't get notes. I did not get the notes finished this morning, and I really wish I had. So... The guys put a blank note page in your, uh, I still would like you to take notes if you would like to take notes. If anyone needs a note page, just raise your hand and we'll get one to you. Come on, someone just pretend. <laughs> I just like to see him running. All right, everybody's got a note page that, that, that requires a note. 
We are in a series called... Called. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. That's what I was fishing for here this morning. And um, this morning I'm going to take a, a, a different kind of, different sermon this morning. This is more of a teaching. We're going to look in all four Gospels, well, three of the four Gospels, two of them, Matthew and Mark, have the same scripture. So there's a lot of scripture. And some of you are just going to, some of you love that stuff. And I know others are thinking, oh, no. Whatever you might be thinking, just pray that God will speak to you in those scriptures. So what I want to talk about this morning is the nature of the call. And to do that, we're going to look at the calling of the disciples. How it happened, when it happened, and the nature of it. Calls come to us in all shapes and sizes. On call, call waiting, call forwarding, dropped call, recall. And, and as we go through this calling of the disciples, you're going to see all of those elements of a call. And these things happen in our lives too. And, and, and we're, we're, we're going to look at this calling of the disciples. Now, the key to understanding the call of the dis disciples is it's big picture. You've got to look at it from all four Gospels and then kind of piece it together, the, the events and the times and, and how it happened. Because it's, quite frankly, it's quite confusing. Now, before we get there, quick review. So our core passage of Scripture, I'm going to do what I did last week. I want to ask you all to stand. Oh, please, Pastor Mike. All that can stand, please stand. Now sit. Now stand. No. <laughs> and let's read this together. 1 Peter 2.9. Let's read this together. 1 Peter 2.9. But you are not like that. For you are a chosen people, you are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, as a result, as a, re as a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. All right, you may be seated. So quick recap here. In a nutshell, here's what we've learned. Everyone is called, but not everyone responds to the call. You are called to a purpose, not just a position or a task. And you are called to who before do, who do. And we've got a nice, clear definition that we put together that kind of encompasses all of this, what a call is. Your God-given purpose to bring glory to the Lord's name and expand the kingdom of heaven. And uh, there's many scriptures that point to that. The one I picked for last week was 1 Corinthians 10.31. So whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. And last week we talked about the easiest way of bringing God, bringing that call into our lives to bring glory to God's name and expand the kingdom of heaven, quite simply, is to try and bring God into everything that you do. Make it a conscious decision. So that kind of gets us up to date. If you're joining us online, if you're a guest for the first time, uh, I strongly suggest that you go into our website and to Facebook and, and look at the last two messages that will bring you up to where we are today. All right. Let's see what we can learn about all of this by looking at Jesus' very first group of callees. I don't know if that's a word, but it is now. The 12 disciples. Let's go through them first. There's Simon, who is also called Peter. His brother, Andrew. They were both fishermen. James, the son of Zebedee. And they put the son of Zebedee because there's two James. His brother, John. They were both fishermen too. So we got two sets of brothers. There's Philip. Nathaniel, also called Bartholomew in some of the scriptures. Thomas, who goes by a bunch of names. Didymus is another name. They both mean the same thing. In different languages, they mean twin. Matthew, he was a tax collector. There's the other James, James the son of Alphaeus, to distinguish him from the first James, also sometimes known as James the Lesser. How would you like that? <laughs> With a group of people, we got James and James the Lesser. <laughs> we have Mike Big Mike and Mike Medium. Like, ah. 
Then we've got Thaddeus, who is sometimes called Judas, son of James, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, that, who betrayed God. So let me tell you just a little bit about these guys. So we know that we've got two sets of brothers, Peter, Andrew, James, and John were all fishermen. Matthew was a tax collector, probably well-educated. We're not going to look at his call today. Thomas was a twin. That's what his name means. Simon was a zealot. A zealot was a, a, fan, a fanatic. He may have been a political zealot who wanted to get the Romans out of there because he was a Jewish man. He, he may have been a religious zealot. We don't know, but whatever he was zealous about, it was strong enough that they added it to his name. It's... Simon the Zealot. There's a chance that Thomas, Nathaniel, and Philip were also fishermen, which we'll see a little bit later. But we don't know. We don't know anything about James the Less, anything more about Thaddeus, or anything more about Judas Iscariot, except that he was the one who betrayed God, and, and he ended up killing himself. Now, how did this raggle-taggle group of men become the disciples of Jesus, a.k.a. the called? So we're going to look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, the passage in Matthew and Mark is exactly the same, so we're just going to read one. So let's start with Matthew. Lots of scripture, I'm sorry. You say Some of you are like, yes, and some of you are like, eh. So this is Matthew 4. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little further up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father Zebedee, repairing their nets. And he called them to come too. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. So this is in Matthew 4, it's in Mark 1. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> just think about what happened here. These guys just drop their nets, leave their business, their families, walk away from it all, to go follow this random stranger who's walking along the beach and says, hey guys, quit that, come follow me. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? I mean, who does that? And if you, if you want to get the contacts, if you go all the way back to Matthew 1 and you read through, this is the first time these guys are in the picture. First encounter with Jesus. If you go to the parallel account in Mark 1, exactly the same thing. And it makes me wonder, what was it about Jesus? <laughs> what charisma did he have that these men would encounter him in this way? Just stop what they're doing, drop everything, and go follow him. I mean, it, it's very intimidating. I remember the first time that I ever read this, I was a bricklayer. And I always like to put myself in a situation, and I'm, you know, I'm thinking, well, what would it be like? I'm up on the scaffold laying bricks with the guys, and, and this guy comes walking through the construction site, and he looks at me, and he says, hey, come follow me. Drop my trowel down, climb off the scaffold, walk away from my job, my family, my kids, and go follow me this guy. The bills all still need to be paid. The rent still needs to be paid. The mortgage. We know that Peter was married. And Paul tells us actually that, that maybe all of the apostles were married. And, and I think, you know, it's quite intimidating. Why are they such spiritual giants? Because And I'm not, because quite honestly, if if this random guy came walking through the construction site and said, Mike, come follow me, they'd be like, nah, that's good. <laughs> I got me a job here. I like this job. It makes me some money. Catch me later, guy. I mean, I wouldn't climb off the scaffold. I would not go down there. So are these guys more spiritual than me? Or is there something more going on that we don't really know about at this point? See, context is king. 
So that's the account from Matthew. Let's turn to Luke and see what Luke says. Now you'll notice on the last one and this one, you've got this little subtitle, The First Disciples. It was in the Matthew account. Now that's not in the Bible. These are titles that the publishers of these Bibles have added at a later date. It's not, there's no Greek thing that says the first disciples. But each one has decided to put that in there. So we've got Luke here. One day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. So it's a different scenario here. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Okay, that's a little different. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out to where it's deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And we know something more is going on there. It seems like these guys have got a relationship. And this time their nets were so full of fish that they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat. And soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. He's becoming aware like this guy's no ordinary guy. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people, similar to what it said in the last passage. And as soon as they landed, they left everything to follow Jesus. Okay, so we got some new details here. Now, is this the same event told from a different perspective, or is this a different event? They both got that, sub, that subtitle, The First Disciples. Now, there's a reason that we have four gospels instead of one gospel. I mean, why do we need four accounts of the same story? Because they give us a more complete picture of what's going on. You know, when police are investigating an incident, they look for witnesses, right? But they don't go to the first witness and say, okay, we got a witness. They want to talk to all of the witnesses and get everybody's account so that they get a more complete picture. That's, that's why we have four Gospels. So there's Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Let's go to John. John, for me, is the equalizer. Matthew, Mark, and Luke were all written before John. John was written later. And, and I truly believe that part of the reason that John wrote his gospel, it's an eyewitness account, is because he probably had seen these accounts of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and we believe there was probably another one that we call Q, but we don't have it. And, and I think he looked at those, and, and, and he's reading through them, and he's thinking, hang on a minute. I'm not saying this stuff is wrong, but th there's more to this story than what these guys have told you. And he brings a different perspective to the, to the Gospels and, and a different perspective of what it means to be a disciple. A lot of details that are not found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John's account of the calling begins with the ministry of John the Baptizer, John the Baptist. And in chapter 1, he talks about who John the Baptist is, that he's come, he's the one who's preparing the way for the Lord. And the, the Pharisees come out to see John the Baptist, and they're questioning him. They're all waiting for the Messiah to come. Everybody's got, we know he's coming, we know he's coming. And they go out and they see John, and they ask him, are you the one? Are you the Messiah? And John says, no, I'm not the Messiah. I'm here to make the way straight for the Messiah. I'm here to tell you that the Messiah is coming and he's coming soon, but I'm not him. So we pick it up in John chapter 1, verse 29. So that's just happened, this, this conversation with the Pharisees. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, 
the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's the one I was talking about when I said a man coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. I didn't recognize him as the Messiah. This is an interesting comment by John here. I did not recognize him as the Messiah, but I have been baptizing with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John testified. I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him. Because John's baptized him already. I didn't know he was the one. But when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, the one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testify that he is the chosen one of God. So this is John's testimony. Then you've got this subtitle again. Next screen, please. The first disciples. Okay, well, we had the first disciples in Mark and Matthew. We had the first disciples in Luke. Now John's got the first disciples. The following day, John was again standing with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, look, there's the Lamb of God. When John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following. What do you want? He asked them. They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher. Where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying. And they remained with him the rest of the day. So they're going to hang out with Jesus. Jesus has invited them along to where they're staying. Come and hang out, guys. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men who heard what John said and then followed Jesus. Andrew went to his brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ, which means chosen one. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, your name is Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter which means rock. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. So this is all happening down near Jerusalem. That's where John the Baptist had his ministry. So these guys are down there for some reason. And the reason is, they are disciples of John the Baptist. Jesus is baptized. John has baptized Jesus. He does this testimony about who Jesus is. These guys connect to Jesus. Jesus decides, I'm going back to Galilee. Next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, come, follow me. First time we heard of Philip. Philip was from Bethsaida, which is in Galilee. Andrew and Peter's hometown. Philip went to look for Nathanael and told him, we have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. So they might be familiar with Joseph too. This is Joe's boy. Turns out he's the Messiah. Nazareth, exclaimed Nathaniel, can anything good come from Nazareth? Nazareth, come and see for yourself, Philip replied. As they approached, Jesus said, now here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. What a great greeting. Eh? You're, you're coming to meet Jesus for the first time. Wow. To call someone a son of Israel means that he's a genuine Jewish person. He's a, he's a follower of Yahweh. A man of complete integrity. How do you know about me, Nathaniel asked. Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. Freaky. Then Nathaniel exclaimed, Rabbi, teacher, you are the son of God, the king of Israel. Jesus asked him, do you, believe, do you believe this just because I told you I had seen you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. Then he said, I tell you the truth. You will see the heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on the son of man, the one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. And then to put a little context into chapter 2, the next day, so this is like three days now, 
There was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. So there's a lot more detail here. Now we discover that Peter, Andrew, James, and John already knew Jesus way before this event in Matthew or Mark or Luke. The event in John predates the accounts of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Now, we've got our Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. We read Matthew first. We read Mark. Then we read Luke. And what really is the truth, what happened in John came first, what happened in Luke came second, and what happened in Matthew and Mark came third in this order. So, let me tie this together and and get to the point. (laughs) There were three calls, not one. Three calls. Chronologically, Peter, Andrew, Philip, and Nathaniel first became aware that Jesus was the Messiah back down in Bethany in Judah. Andrew was already a disciple of John the Baptist. That means that he was a deeply spiritual man. He's been learning about Jesus from John the Baptist way before he ever met Jesus. But he was still a fisherman. He was a disciple of John and a fisherman. Some of the other disciples we know were also disciples of John the Baptist, deeply spiritual men, before they met Jesus. And then they become disciples of Jesus and fishermen. They're still fishermen. They still fish for a living. They were followers, disciples of John the Baptist. Now they're followers, disciples of Jesus. But they're fishermen. That was the first call, this call in John. Before the events recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke ever happened, they were already Jesus' disciples. They had already responded to a call. They had witnessed miracles. I mean, they're at the the wedding. We didn't read it, but most of us know that's where Jesus turned the water into wine. So they've seen that. They've probably seen other miracles and who knows what else. So they're not strangers on a beach and and Jesus walks by and they don't know who he is and, and he calls them to walk away. There's a whole lot of stuff that's gone on before that ever happens. Hey guys, drop your gear. Come follow me. That was the second call. And they were still fishermen. And and look at the intense. It's It's a bit more intense than the first one. You see, the first call, he said, come with me. And he heads up to Galilee. Well, they live in Galilee. It's not a biggie. We're going back to where we live. Jesus is going back to where we live. We're going back to where we live. And then you got this beach encounter. Jesus calls out to them, come follow me and I will show you. Note the tents there. I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. The tense is future tense. I thought I underlined that. No, we're on the wrong scripture here. Here we go. (laughs) Pay attention, Paul. We're watching you, buddy. Come follow me and I will show Future tense, right? I will show. I call this call waiting. The call down in Galilee was call forwarding. Come with me, guys. We're going to do something. Now he tells them, this is going to happen. This is who you are going to be called. This is call waiting. Even after this call to a more intense level of discipleship, there's still fishermen. The third time that Jesus calls Peter and the other fishermen is in that passage in Luke. This is the third call now, different event. In Matthew, Mark, Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee. Peter and the others were in their boats working. In Luke, Jesus is teaching the people. The boats are empty, different event. The fishermen are washing their nets from the previous night's work, different event. Jesus gets into the boat with Peter. 
James and John are close by. Jesus calls them again, third call. And this is the most intense of the three calls. They've worked all night. They haven't caught a thing. Jesus tells them, head on out. Give it one more try, guys. And Peter says, seriously, Jesus? We're just waiting to go home. We're tired, you know. We just listened to you do a sermon. We're hungry. We didn't make any money last night. We just, we just want to go home. And she's, no, no, head on out to deep water. We're going fishing one more time. Okay, if you say so. And I just want to read that again. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh, Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were his, the other with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you see the difference? Before it says, you will be. And in this one, he says, from now on, you will be fishers for people. It's present tense. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. It begins today, boys, is what he's saying to them. We've done all this work up to this point. You've seen me. You, you know who I am. You know what I'm about. Today, I want you to walk away from it all. But he does this miracle before. He gives them such a massive catch of fish like they've never seen. These guys are professional fishermen. This is what they do. They've never seen anything like this. So on the day that Jesus calls them to walk away from it, he gives them this massive catch of fish. Now, why would he do that? I think he did that miracle for a purpose. I want you to know that when you drop everything and you come follow me, I'm not abandoning your family. I'm not abandoning. I will take care of you. I'll take care of your loved ones. Look what I can do. You can have this confidence in following me that you're not going to be abandoned. Come now. Leave it all and follow me. We are on call. We had call forwarding. We had call waiting. Now we are on call. But there are two more calls. I'm not going to get into the scripture because it's getting late, and I'm going to summarize. After Jesus is crucified and resurrected, but before he ascends up into heaven, these disciples go back to what they used to do. They go back to fishing. So they've been on call with Jesus. Then things go in a direction that they're not expecting, and Jesus is not around, and they do what they naturally do. Let's go fishing. They head back to Galilee, same kind of thing, and they go fishing. And they're out fishing, and it's the same experience. They can catch a thing. And they see this man on the shore, and they can't make out who the man is. And he yells out to them, throw your nets on the other side. Well, huh? What's he know about fishing? But they do it. And the same thing happens as happened in Luke. They catch such a massive haul of fish. It's like, That's Jesus. And we know the story. Peter tucks up his, takes off some of his clothes, tucks the rest, and he jumps in the water and he's on his way into Jesus. So you had call forwarding, call waiting, on call. They go fishing, dropped call. Now they have recall. Jesus says, Come. They sit down and they have a meal together. And Jesus recalls them to the mission that he called them to, and they get back on call. He says, I'm going to leave you guys, but I'm going to leave you with something special. I'm going to leave you with the Holy Spirit. It is the mark that you belong to me, but not only is it the mark that it, you belong to me, it's going to empower you to do things greater than even the things I've ever done. I'm leaving you, but I'm not leaving you alone. You are the ones now. You are on call. Go do the work I've called you to do. All right, the point. 
the nature of the call. This journey with Jesus is exactly that. It's a journey. Our calling is a journey. It's not an event. It's not a moment. It's not a thing. It's a journey. It's a journey of learning to trust Jesus. And the more you trust Jesus, the more you will discover that Jesus is trustworthy. And, and he calls us into this relationship. It gets deeper and deeper. He keeps calling you to take another step. And each one's a scary step. I'm going to tell you right now. On this, this calling, it's like, ooh. Is that you, Jesus? Take the step. Okay. Ooh. That is you. That's pretty cool. I got another step for you. Really? Is that you? Yep. Take the step. Wow, it really is you, Jesus. And he keeps wooing us into a deeper and deeper relationship with him by teaching us to trust him. And we learn to trust him in obedience, in serving him, in doing what he's called us to do. But it's a journey and not an event. It's a journey of learning to serve Jesus. But then the key here, and this is what this, this whole thing about called is all about, Stay on the journey and continue to respond to Jesus' call as he calls you on the journey. So my question for you this morning, the challenge this morning is where are you on the journey? Are you on call? Are you call waiting? I hate call waiting, right? Right? You're on a call with someone and they put you on hold because they're talking to someone else. Sometimes I do it. But it's like, really? And it's okay if it's 30 seconds or so and they get back to you. Listen, you know, I need to talk to them. I'll call you back later. Thanks. But when you're on there for like two, three minutes, and, uh, my time's just as important as your time. Call waiting is not fun. Or maybe you're in call forwarding. That's kind of like, I'm, I'm in process. I'm learning. And, and I want to be on this journey, but I'm not really doing anything just at this moment. I know you're calling me, God, and, 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 and I'll get there. I'm just not there at this moment. And maybe some of you are a dropped call. You were following Jesus. You were serving Jesus. And all of a sudden, something's happened along the way, and you quit serving Jesus. And you still quit serving. This call was dropped. Maybe you need a recall. Wherever you are, I, we, want to help you to continue to get on or stay on this journey with Jesus, this calling. And last week I talked to you about shape, April 7th. Still haven't talked to the elders about it. Shape is something that we did some years ago. It comes from Rick Warren. What's that called again? Purpose Driven Saddleback. And, and shape is an acronym. It's about who you are. We're made up of, of our spiritual gifts that God gives us when we invite Jesus into our lives. Our heart, what we're passionate about. Our abilities, what comes naturally to us. Our personality, who God has kind of shaped us to be. And our experiences in life, good, bad, ugly, whatever. God will use all of your experiences, even your failures, for good if you give them to Him. And we want to help people discover their shape because when you discover your shape, maybe you can start to see, okay, this is what God is gifting me for. This is where God is leading me. Maybe I need to take this step now. And maybe the first step is simply, who am I, God? Who did you create me to be? And we're going to invite everybody to join us on this journey. Now, some of you know your shape. And you're thinking, I don't really need to do shape. If you know your shape, come on the journey and help someone discover their shape. If you've done it before, I can tell you this, it changes. It changes as God molds us. I mean, if I did this 25, 30 years ago, 
I wasn't this shape. <laughs> Spiritually, I'm in much better shape than I was 30 years ago. Physically, that's a whole different kettle of fish. But it changes. So if you did this, we did it 10 years ago or so, come back and do it again. We're going to start it on April the 7th. That's the Sunday after Easter. That is intentional. Because how you can be part of this is invite people to come to church for Easter. People like to come for Easter, don't they? We get a whole bunch of people at Christmas. We get a whole bunch of people at Easter that don't normally come. Well, we're fishing. That's what God told us to do. We're fishing. We put the bait out there. It's Easter. We're going to talk about Jesus. Oh, I like uh, Easter. And at the end of the Easter service, we're going to say, hey, starting next week, we're going to find out who we are. People like to talk about themselves. And some of those people will come back like, oh, I'm interested in that. I wonder if this will help me in my career. I wonder if it will help me in my relationships. It will. But in order for them to be a part of that, you've got to invite them. This is a part of how you, what, what, what was the definition of calling? Bring glory to God's name and expand the kingdom of heaven. A simple invite to Easter is a way of doing that. Now, on Monday, March the 18th, that's not tomorrow. That's a week from tomorrow. The elders are going to love me because I haven't told them about this either. I'm going to have a planning and implementation. <laughs> implementation. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Impl Say it for me. Implementation. implementation. Still an hour from me and I'm useless. Meeting. <laughs> Need all the small group leaders there, the Sunday school leaders, any ministry leads. I'll, I'll send you all an email, a text. But I'm inviting anybody that wants to be a part of implementing this to come and join us at that meeting. So I'm really opening this up. That's March 18th at 7 o'clock here. So put it in your phone if you want to be part of that, part of this implementation. And then April the 7th, we're going to launch it. Let me close with this. I'm passionate about this whole thing called. You know, God laid it on my heart at the beginning of the year. I shared it with the elders. Here's our plan for the year, guys. Here's our scripture. 1 Peter 2, 19. And God's just been speaking to me in that scripture. And, and, I, and I, here's what I think. When I look at you all, you know, last week there were more people here than we've had in three and a half years. And I feel responsible as the pastor. If God brings people to us, he expects us to do something with those people. He expects us to help them on their walk with Jesus. And I'm absolutely passionate about that. This is an invitation for you to be a part of this, a part of what Lakeway is doing because you are Lakeway. And seek, God, you know what? I think I dropped the call. I think I'm on call waiting. I think I'm on call forwarding. I was on the call. I'm not on the call now. Never been on the call. I want to get on the call. Join with us. And let's get on this call together. And let's bring glory to God's name and expand the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Let me pray. Father, we give you thanks. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Father, I thank you that you never give up on us. You call us and you call us and you call us. And when we answer that call, you continue to call us. And when we ignore that call, you continue to call us. And when we sit in waiting, you continue to call us. You don't hang up on us. You're there for us. Father, I lift up everybody in this room today, those who are watching online, those who will watch later. And I pray that you would just put an excitement in their spirit, Father. Maybe there's a little bit of fear. I don't know what God is going to do with me. But I know you have a plan for each and every person in this room. May we have the courage to step out 
and begin responding to your call. And if you're already on that path to continue responding to God's call. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Mo, are you? Thank you, sir. Am I on? There we go. Thank you, Pastor Mike. You know what? I was thinking about taking that a little bit further than what you were talking about. The, if you have a really important person on your phone, you have speed dial, don't you? Sometimes you have speed dial, and what the deal is, is that person so important you just want to push one button and get them. That's what we need to do with the Lord. We need to put him on speed dial so that when we have that problem, that's who we need to go to. So that's just something to think about. I tell you what, well, the guys that are going to help, help me and the ladies that are going to help me with the offering, please come forward. We're going to pray for that, and then as we're passing, I never know what to call that thing, satchel or whatever it is, the bag. Uh, that's when you put these... These things in I asked you to fill out that I forgot to tell you to fill out. And you can do your offering in many different ways. You can do it online. You can do it by writing a check and putting it in there. You people online, if you feel led to give, you can do the same thing. There's a couple of different ones on our website that you can go through to do that. So we'd invite you to do that and give back to God. But let's pray for that. Lord, as we come to you today to give a portion of that that you've blessed us with, I just pray that we're generous and that we're freely giving that to you so that we can receive the total blessing that you've prepared for us ahead of time. Thank you for your offering. I just pray that you would bless this church so that we can bring glory to you and expand the kingdom. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as there are Passing the hat, or whatever you want to call it, I never can think of the word. Uh, there's a lot of things on the back of your bulletin. If you can get one, this will help you to remember, okay? Because I am the worst of remembering things. Today, at 12 p.m., there's going to be a volunteer uh, meeting for the people that want to participate in VBS. If you can stay for that, please do so. Uh, it is such a neat thing about July. The VBS is such a blessing, not, not to just those kids that they get to come and hear about Jesus, but the people that work in that get such a blessing from doing that. You won't believe how fun it is to teach these kids. Okay? Uh, it doesn't say. I am saying it is in here, okay? So we're going to do that. Uh, now, yeah, you got to have it, you know, this way before you can have it this way. Anyway, today, lawn maintenance care team, spring is springing. Please consider, you know, being on the lawn team if you can, if you're able to do that. Uh, you can see De David Edmondson. Right there he is, raising his hand. He would be happy to hear from you if you'd like to donate. You know, some people sing, some people teach, some people help with the children. Some guys go, man, I don't think I can, there's anything I can do. You know what? If you can push a lawnmower, you can help. And that will be a blessing or drive it. We'll put you on one of those, and it's a fun ride, let me tell you. That's one of the reasons I'm not on the team anymore we've replaced more sprinkler heads than we need to just ask Hector okay we got an Easter egg hunt we need some candy for that so if you would please bring some candy next time you go to the store grab an extra bag you know I grab two so I have one for at home and one here but you know being diabetic I got to do that but uh, please read that March 16th it's coming up, 6.30 p.m. at the church over in Frisco. Uh, if you want to know more about that, they're having a fundraising dinner that is really cool. If you want to get a little taste of it, not only the food is good, they have testimony from some of the guys that 
have either participated or been in prison, it's really neat to go to that. And it's it's kind of a, I don't know, Randy, it, it's have flyers out front that will help remind you. It's next Saturday, so don't forget that. Okay, next Sunday after this, we're going to be doing the 101 membership. There's a lot of people signed up. If you're going to come, please let us know. Just uh, drop a note, you know, hand it to Bob as you walk out. That's Bob, breakfast on a bun. Hand it to him, and he will get it to Pastor Mike. That way, we have enough materials ready so when you show up, you, you have your own little packet. And uh, the last but not least, Texas Land, uh, Legends versus Ontario Youth Event. Basketball Fellowship, you can contact Brandon or Courtney Klein or Nancy Hicks or John Fry. There is a cost, but it's only $10. So if you'd like to go, we need you to sign up by next week. Okay, it's 10 bucks. Well, there's a, little, there's a little thing on the bottom of your bulletin. I don't know how to use those, but you point your phone at it, and it'll bring something up, and then it'll give you instructions on how to do it. I'm real, I love technology, but it's like a foreign language to me. Hey. I know of one that loves, huh? Well, thank you. You know what? It's, it's been a great day today. I thank you all for coming, and I want to send you all off with a, a blessing. Please, would everyone stand? As we go out throughout this week, you know, there may be somebody that's really hurting out there. Just smile and tell them, hey, God loves you. Or, or just smile and say, hey, man, I hope you have a good day. You don't have to know them. But you might bless somebody that that's the only blessing that they receive for that day. So let's pray. Lord, as we go from this house, we just ask your blessing that you would just take us and put us, your arms around us. Hug us. Let us know that you're there. And Lord, help us let other people to know about you. Let them see in our face the way that you would have us to portray you. Thank you, and just keep everyone safe and come back. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, you are dismissed.